Now, some of you guys might complain that you don't have a truck or you don't have four wheel drive. Let me tell you, you don't need either of them. You just need to know how to use what you have. Let me show you. This is my Toyota Matrix. She's going on a hefty 15 years old and she thinks she is part pickup truck. We have eight foot long four by four treated posts in here that fit along with two, yes, two 55 gallon barrels, ladies and gentlemen, with room to spare on this side over here. Hey guys, and welcome back to the WT Farm Girls channel. I'm Suzanne, and today we're gonna do kind of a smattering of several different things. Here in Michigan, winter can be up and it can be down, and it can just change in the blink of an eye. So because of that, uh, we try to take advantage of decent weather while we still can. I've got some manure to shovel out of the horse stall. They need to get their feet trimmed, and we're gonna make some really neat feeders for them that you can use for horses, for goats, for cows, for whatever. Let me show ya. Um, if you have not packed a Toyota Matrix full, let me tell you, be shocked at what you can fit in these things. This is probably one of the best little cars you could have on the market. And it might not have four wheel drive, but you put a set of snow tires on it, you'll be golden. Just saying. That's a little less than desirable. Um, so these guys had snow and ice caked on the top and so the other was loading them up. I'm like, yeah, just knock some of that off, it'd be fine. I didn't know that there was snow and ice and mud and gravel stuck to the bottom because I didn't put them in. So yeah, now it's all over my car. But uh, I think I think my horse water's leaking everywhere. Oh gosh. She's like, seriously, mom? Seriously, what are you doing? What am I doing here? Ah, it fell out. At least it's full, but goodness sakes. Moving on. Oh, hey guys. Oh, man, it is so warm out here. I am officially declaring it to be swimsuit weather. Well, not for me, but many in Michigan like to put shorts on and flip flops when the temperature hits above 40 degrees. Those of you in Florida would be horrified. But that's the way it is out here. So, uh, yeah, we have lots and lots of mud. <laughs> Yep, so this is what I need to work on. Um, I started it last week. I started cleaning this side out, and that's about all I had time for. It took me probably an hour and a half just to scoop that all out, and now I've gotta do this side. Yeah, so one of the things that you wanna pay in mind, I'm out here in Michigan, I know some of you guys have commented, but in Michigan, we don't put anything in our horse stalls. We don't. I don't know. I don't know why we don't, but it's just nobody in Michigan that I have ever talked to puts bedding in their animal shel shelters. I don't know why, but that's just what it's done. So what we need to do, we're gonna scrape it up. There's probably a good six inches that need to be scraped up. And then after I scrape that up, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna get some sand from out back. And I'm gonna put a thin layer of sand in this whole thing. On top of that sand, I actually do have some bedding. Sometimes they do get hay in here and they'll use the hay for bedding. 
but I am going to put some bedding in here. Um, it just kind of helps create a barrier between them and the rest of the ground. All right, so this is going to be pretty basic. We've got our four by fours and we have our barrels, two of each. Um, I didn't measure the four by four posts. I'm just basically <laughs> gonna say one post. Yeah, <laughs> one post per barrel. So four pieces per post per barrel. I think that's right. All right, so we have our electric Salzo because I'm not sure what Eric did with his battery operated one. Um, and in case you're wondering, no, I did not put that on upside down the first time. We're gonna go with the answer that I put it on correctly the first time. <laughs> yeah, these are food grade, at least that's what I'm told. Um, so this one says it has orange aroma in it and it says an ethanol solution isn't ethanol what they put in cars for like fuel just wondering on that so are we drinking fuel or are cars drinking food which is it anyway so we are going to split this barrel down the center there is no right or wrong way to do it. We're just going to slice it. Well, okay, I haven't done this before, so I'm assuming there's no right or wrong way. Okay, totally change once I cut this in half and be like, ah, wrong way. Anyway, um, so this particular barrel I bought from the feed mill down the road for $17. Okay, so when we open these up, it could be like a pinata with stuff just like bursting out everywhere. Should be kind of exciting. Safety first. It is political season. So at the end of the season, go along and correct, collect these. Uh, they're made out of plastic. And you can put a bunch of them down and you can lay on them if you're working outside. Um, you can use them for houses for your kids. I mean, there's so many good uses for these things. Just. Don't throw them in the trash. So you got one line. I'm gonna go this way. Ah, uh, yeah, I can pretty much tell it's not gonna be perfectly half. I think that side's gonna be a little bit bigger than this side. Yeah. bottom and then the edge so it's actually reinforced but we got our first cut in so now we can cut it straight back straight cut <laughs> this thing cuts like butter and uh, I guess I wasn't quite expecting that
right. So, so don't make fun of my cutting skills. It is very crooked, but it'll be still very functional. So once you get to the bottom, it goes fast. So do not put your hands, your feet, the cord, or anything below the sawzall as you're cutting downward. Once you get to the next lip, it's going to be thicker, so you can't go fast right through it. Um, so it's a good time to stop and flip it up like this. And if you're careful, you can keep your sawzall in it still. And then we're going to cut down. Hold out with one hand, cut with the other. Just watch that blade coming up. You don't want it to hit you, so don't put your hand right on the cut. Put it next to it. Gonna be a little bit trickier cut because it is the last cut. See trouble with a capital D. What are you doing in there? Yeah, you. No, no, no! Don't eat. Ah! Don't eat the side by side. I'm got you lots of food. You don't need to eat the side by side. Ah! Uh -uh. Not food. You are not allowed to chew on that. Don't chew on the side by side. And there you have it. We now have two halves. Honestly, once it's cut, it doesn't look quite as awful as it was looking when I was cutting it. So it's not too terrible. Um, it cuts very cleanly. So yeah. Uh, overall, I'd say it, it was a success. Easy peasy. So we're going to cut the other barrel in half so that we have four and then we're going to move on to the legs. This entire project, just the basic feeder, could probably bang out easily in one hour. Um, especially if you're more skilled than I am. We're just going to cut into magic right here because I know you don't want to have to see me wrestle with another barrel. So let's just split him in half. Ready? One, two, three. There they are! Okay, okay. So I know you wanted to see me mess up this barrel. Ah, this one's definitely messed up a little bit more. So I'll show you really fast in fast motion. Here you go. So that was easy. It was actually fun cutting them open. Um, you know, like I said, they go fast. So watch where your hands are, watch where your hair is, watch where your feet, the cord. Keep everything out of harm's way. Um, yeah, blue confetti all over the ground. So that is the first step. Super easy. The next step, just as easy. Trouble. Moise. Moisey. You've been behaving yourself, but 
Come on. There you go. Boys. Yeah. The washer? I got the washer, but he's got the other half. Oh. Still in his mouth? Yeah. Moist. Well, don't eat that, buddy. Not a good idea. Come on. We now have to cut the four by four posts. So they're eight feet long and we need four pieces out of them. Okay guys, here's your school quiz. If it's eight feet long and we need four pieces out of them, how long should each piece be? Ready? If you guess two feet, you are correct. A plus for you. So easy enough. So we're gonna have a total of 16 pieces. I should have asked you that one too, but wait, no, <gasps> that's not right. <laughs> okay, I need to go back to school. 16 legs is how many legs I had, one for each foot. So there's actually going to be eight feet. Now, I had a discussion with Eric as far as which direction to put them. I had thought to go crosswise, one on each side like that. Um, I thought that just made more sense, uh, take up a little less space, the horses wouldn't trip on them, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But then Eric pointed out if I did that, I'd actually be using up more wood. Good thinking. So we are actually going to be putting them on the ends. So a two foot chunk there, two foot chunk there, cuts down the expenses. So let's get cutting. All right, so we got our four by fours marked every two feet. When you buy lumber, be sure to pre-measure it before you start marking because it's often not cut exactly to the measurement specifications. Most of the time it's under. A two by four is not really two inches by four inches. It's like almost an inch and a half to three and a half or something like that. So in the case of these, they're actually longer than eight feet. So not a bad deal. Just keep that in mind. All right, so we're gonna put it right here and cut on through. You didn't really think I was going to cut that, did you? Come on. I'm not that dumb. You want a more aggressive blade for wood, less aggressive blade for things like plastic. So this is our wood blade. It'll cut a little bit better than the other one, which will probably start smoking if I try to use it. take a little while. Well, at least one of them likes it. Oh, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it, guys. 
and thank you so much for subscribing if you are not already subscribed click that subscribe button i appreciate it all right so we've got the first one done um i am missing a washer on that one because if you've ever pulled stuff out of the bulk boxes at the hardware store you know that once in a while you get an off one so yeah that guy did not have a washer because the extra washer was too small so that's okay um the washers are not necessarily needed it's just supposed to give a little extra strength so that it doesn't tear out through the bottom quite as fast because uh you know livestock can get a little rowdy so these should hold up pretty good and then i went through and i cut a slit in the bottom uh with the saw just to kind of facilitate a little bit more drainage and we'll probably go through and put, pop a couple holes into the corners too uh just to help get stuff draining a little bit more yeah it's not exactly square um if you really wanted if you're a diehard you wanted it square the best way to do it is to make a frame first and then lag it on because the problem i ran into those barrels are really slippery when you go to drive it in it skates just a little bit and that's enough to pop it off center so they're a little crooked it's okay they'll, they'll still work um, lastly, before you put this out in the pasture, we're going to go through and file the edges down because they are a little sharp. And the horses love scratching their face on things that are a little bit sharp. So to help keep their fur on their face, we're just going to file this down really quick. <laughs> I think if I blow torch the sides just right, I think it would melt off the edges and it might melt just a little bit um, along the top, but I don't think it would be anything too terrible if you're careful. So that's another option too if you want to get those edges trimmed down rather than sending, spending like an hour filing each barrel. So uh, yeah, so let's get this out there and see how it does with some hay. to do a little more modifications on it but here's what it looks like yeah I knew it wasn't gonna hold a whole bale but so we are not done this is phase one and uh, we'll see what phase two looks like so the idea is to keep it contained obviously they're still gonna rip all that hay out of there and it's still gonna be all over the ground but it's a start so, this is phase one, phase two, is we're actually going to cover over the top so that we can get, hopefully, a whole veil in there and it's gonna be contained. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope your projects are going smoothly. And if not, it's okay, join the team. We can uh, tweak on them little by little. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys.